Hello YouTube. So I have a friend. His name's Dante. And he wants to learn how to make video games. So I want to go over some very basic, quick, and easy ways to get into uh, video game development. Um, they're not going to be like super fancy video game development, but it'll get started so you can start learning the basics of, uh, of the uh, video game creation process. Uh, things to think about in general programming methods that are used in video game development. So without diving into Unity and learning C Sharp or diving into C++ and getting into Unreal or making your own uh, engine, one of the quickest ways in is to start playing with Python and Pygame. Um, to get started with that, we would need to do a little bit of setup. So I'm going to just kind of go through some very basic setup and we're going to load up Python, we're going to load up Pygame, we're going to load up uh, Visual Studio Code for text editing and the Python extension for Visual, Visual Studio Code to make it a little bit easier to get started and learn the basics. So without further ado, let's start jumping into some of this. So to get Python, you're going to want to go to python.org. Um, you can go to their Downloads tab and then download the latest, which is 392 at the moment. Now, I already have it downloaded, so we're not going to go through downloading it. I am going to do the install for Python. Visual Studio Code is already installed, but this is where you would get it as well, which is code.visualstudio.com. I'll put the links in the description uh, after. But you'll download this and get this installed, and we'll get this installed. So I'm going to go ahead and shrink that up. Now, for Visual Studio Code, I just want to point out on the installer these two buttons here. Uh, the add to path should already be checked. We'll want to leave that checked, but these two are not checked by default. And they will make it easier when you have larger projects later on to just open up and, and manipulate your files. And once again, it's already installed, so I'm not going to go through the whole installation for that. We are going to go through the installation for Python because this checkbox down here is not checked by default, and it's very important that you add Python to the path. So the path is a housing for all environment variables that basically say you can execute any from any of these direct directories. If, if, if you tell the computer to execute something, it's going to check those directories first to see if it has the executable in those directories. Uh, the second thing is, and I'm going to go through custom installer so you can see this, we want to make sure we have pip checked here for the install. This is the package installer which will help us install Pygame later on which is the module we're going to be working with. So I'm going to install this for all users on my computer and I recommend you do the same and I'm going to switch this over to my D drive. Now when I hit install it's going to pop up a uh, are you sure you want to let this program make changes to your computer? I'm going to have to tell it okay but it's going to make the screen go black like that. Uh, I have approved it and so it has returned. This takes a minute to do the install. Um, when it gets to pre-compiling it's going to take a little bit longer, but it's not terribly long. It's only a couple of minutes to get all of this done. We're going to sit here and twiddle our thumbs for a minute. Almost done compiling here. It should be just about done. This dash OO is usually really close to done. There, see? Perfect. I'm gonna open up Visual Studio Code. Now, since you didn't have if you didn't have these installed already, you would probably need to reboot at this point. Um, my stuff was mostly installed already. I already have all the path variables. My computer booted with the path variables, so they're all there, but you may need to reboot. Now, once we're in Visual Studio Code, we can kind of ignore the welcome screen for the time being. There's a lot that goes into this editor, but for what we're going to do, you don't need to worry about that. We don't have any files or folders open because this is a first launch type of scenario. We're going to come over here to Extensions. You can do Control-Shift-X, uh, or you can just click on the blocks. 
You'll probably see this in the, in the popular. If you don't, that's fine. You can just type in Python up here. And basically what you're looking at is this is the Microsoft Python extension for Visual Studio Code. Now, Microsoft is the creators of Visual Studio Code. And then these modules can be created by anybody and put up for use. So all these different programmers will have made their own stuff to use. And you'll see a ton of different stuff by different people. This is an actual extension from Microsoft, though. So that's how we know, one, it's coming from a reputable place. And, you know, we know that it's not going to add, it shouldn't add malicious stuff to our systems. And so we're going to go ahead and install this. It takes a few seconds, and then you'll have a disable and uninstall option like that. And then we're going to pop back up here. We're going to go ahead and close this little extension tab. And then we're going to pop back up here to our files and folders. Now, the next thing we need to do is see if we can actually access Python and pip. And I'm not going to bother with doing this through command prompt when we can do a new terminal inside of Visual Studio Code. This is one of the reasons why I've selected this as the tool we're going to get started with. And we're just going to do a Python version check here and a pip version check here. And that proves that those are installed. We're going to do a pip install of pygame, which is the module we're going to need to use. It takes a moment to download it and install it. This warning is just saying that there's a newer version of uh, pip out there. Updating pip on Windows is not worth my time at the moment. We're only one revision, one major revision behind, so it's not terrible. Next thing we'll do is we'll open our project folder. Now, I already have a project folder on my D drive. And this is the Python folder. So I'm going to select that as the folder. It reloads, and here we are. We're going to pop open the terminal again. And I'm just going to hit delete because I have two terminals open here. Uh, you can tell because it has a drop down, you can add more, and you can switch back and forth between them. Kind of a neat feature to have. But here's a side by side. I don't need two of them, I only need one. So I'm back down to just one by hitting this trash can a couple of times. If you go too far, it'll close. And you just have to come back up here and open a new one. It's not a big deal. We're going to make a hello world file up here. We're just going to do hello.py. This is kind of a tradition in learning new languages. To The first thing you, you learn to do is print out the hello world message. So what this does is tell it to print to the command line. Uh, parentheses. And then these quote, any single quotes let, let it know it wants this is what's printing. So as you see here, it says it's one unsaved. These are the open text editor. It's unsaved. This is also a visual indicator up here that it's unsaved, that little white dot. But you've got several indicators saying it's not saved. So we're going to do Control S to save. And look at that. You can also right click and save. Or you can do a file save, save as, or save all if you have multiple files open. Down here. Python, hello.py, and there it is. So we have the very basics of for Python, but we also need to test that Pygame is working. So for this, well actually, let's do a new file. We're going to call this one Pygame dash or yeah, Pygame dash test. That'll work. Uh, actually, it should be Pygame dash test dot pi. There we go. We're going to import Pygame. We need to initialize Pygame, which is going to start up all the pieces of it that we need. So we're going to do pygame.init. Oh, come on. Yep. Now we need we're going to make a display box. So we're going to do display is equal to pygame.display.set mode. Now what we're doing here is telling it that we want to make a box that is 800 by 600 and then we're going to do a pygame display dot update and that'll tell it to go ahead and because we initialized up here but we didn't set the display to any particular size now we're creating the display and then we're setting the size so we have to update it to say hey this is the size we want and then push that change. The next thing that we're going to need to do is an event handler 
to basically say when to close that that display that we're creating. So we're going to do a boolean value of true. And what this is basically saying is, well, what we want is if it's open, which we want it to be open, so it's going to be true. So while it's open, we're going to be doing these things. And what a while this is a while loop, which basically says, as long as open is true, we're going to keep doing this over and over again. And then it's whatever's in this indented section. And what that means is whatever has these four spaces, that's what it's going to keep doing. So anything below here that has four spaces is going to be repeating until open is no longer true. This is going to be a for loop where we get our event from the pygame event handler. So any events we get, and now it's basically going to check for events, and all events are going to go into this, and then it's going to check each and every event to see what that event is. And if that event type is a pygame.quit event, then we are going to make open false. Basically saying we are no longer going to be executing this loop. So we check every event that occurs to see if it's gonna, if it's a quit event. And then if it is, we're no longer doing this loop. And when we close out of this loop, we're going to do a pygame.quit here. And what that's going to do is basically say, OK, this pygame is over, so we're leaving it and free up that memory. And then this quit is actually going to let us, is going to free up all the memory that was used for this entire application. So we're going to save that. We're going to run python pygame-test.py. That's the window. Now, if we didn't have all of this code right here, it would just open up and then close immediately because there's nothing waiting for anything to happen. This code right here just basically says, if I hit this little X, it's going to end the program. And that's it. So that is the basics and all of the simple portions that we would need to start making a game. From here, we would just continue to grow onto it with different variables, classes, objects, um, doing different draw models, making different pieces, and fitting them all together into that display and updating that display as it goes. So this is just getting set up. Uh, with this, we'll be able to move into the next session of trying to build a game. And I think for the next game, next thing we'll do is try and make the snake game which is uh, a very fun little game where the snake goes around trying to eat all the apples and it grows as it eats the apples and eventually you start to run out of space and you can run into yourself. Uh, some people make it so that if you run into the walls you also lose and the game is just to see how many apples you can eat before you run into yourself. So we'll, we'll play with that later on. But I hope that this has been enough of a get started video to, to get you set up. And then we'll move to the next video later. Thank you all for watching.